Hi, this is Mingyao from Singularity Engineering. Today I'm going to do a quick demonstration of ANSYS uh, simulation for an acoustics problem. This is a very basic analysis. We've been doing acoustics for a long time, but ANSYS recently, uh, over the last few releases, have included the harmonic acoustics, static acoustics, and modal acoustics capabilities. So I want to show you a quick example of how to set up a really simple simulation. So usually we do acoustics analysis in the frequency domain. Here I'm going to do a modal analysis followed by a harmonic response. And we'll do a harmonic acoustics from uh, based on the harmonic analysis uh, structures. So the, the first two will do solve a structural simulation of, say, a diaphragm. And then we connect the harmonic response to a harmonic, harmonic acoustic analysis to model how the vibrating diaphragm will change the acoustics behavior. So let's start by uh, creating a quick model in space claim. Okay, so here's a space claim. We'll do a diaphragm, maybe that large. I'll just sketch up something pretty simple here. And uh, we want to assign a location for where we can add some load. So I'm going to do a little five millimeter circle. So that'll be our diaphragm. And we can then put an enclosure on this. And that'll be our volume domain. Uh, it's usually a good policy to make the enclosure fairly large. We do have boundary radiation boundary conditions on the outside. Um, but let's go with this to keep the simulation moving. Next, we'll do a modal analysis uh, followed by a harmonic response and then the acoustic simulation. Yeah, this is the new ANSYS uh, work, Workbench Mechanical Environment. I will suppress the air volume. You can see this is our diaphragm. Uh, by default, everything is set to steel, so we can um, foam. All right, so PVC foam, uh, styrofoam. All right, so polystyrene is the material that's roughly styrofoam. And click on it, uh, and it'll pull up our materials data from Granta. Uh, and obviously, ANSYS has a huge library now with the inclusion of Granta. Only a small portion is, is uh, available here. You can get a lot more materials from the library. Uh, meshing thin geometry, it's, it's uh, useful to make it a little bit, uh, give it some control. So what we can do is I typically like to use a sweep meshing method on this block and use a manual thin because this allows me to specify how many layers through the thickness we have, um, we mesh this part in. Okay, so I want three layers that allow us to represent bending much more accurately. We also have the option in this of setting the mesh as a solid shell element, which reduces the mesh count. So that's uh, the basics of the, of the setup. I'm going to put two fixed supports on either end. Uh, most speakers will have some more advanced uh, spring-like support system, but for this demonstration, we'll keep it really simple here. So we grab the first six resonant frequencies. Um, it went up to 2,000 hertz here, and we can look at each one of these frequencies. Okay. So we got one here. This is the second mode, third mode, fourth mode, fifth mode, sixth mode. Uh, we want it to be quite a bit more. We want uh, acoustic simulation typically goes up to 20 a kilohertz. So let's try 15 modes, see if we can get up there. Okay, so 5,000. We have an option to limit, so maybe I'll limit uh, from 0 to 20,000 hertz, and we'll do a lot of modes. 
Okay, so we ended up doing 59 modes to get up to uh, 20,000 hertz. Let's see what this last mode looks like. And do a little animation to see what kind of mode that is. Pretty interesting. So for harmonic response simulation, this is built, this is going, going to take the analysis from the modal analysis. And I'll do the same to 20,000 hertz. We'll turn on clustering results. And uh, uh, maybe we'll do a cluster of two here. What this means is that it's going to take the center of each mode and analyze uh, a couple of frequencies around it. And I'm going to add a little force, this, the constant force. So harmonic response analysis results in sinus, sinusoidal excitation at each frequency. And solve it. Okay, so we can um, grab the deformation of one of these. What I forgot to do here was to add in some damping. It's important to add damping to harmonic response analysis. There's usually an error that pops up that says I should put some damping in. So let's put 5% damping and run this again. You can see the speed at which this gets solved. Because it's a small model and we're using harmonic response, it's able to go through um, you know, 231 frequency sweeps uh, all together. We can grab this node here. And uh, usually, li I like to look at deformation and velocity, frequency response of velocity. This tells us a frequency response of deformation and velocity. So velocity is typically correlated with acoustic sound pressure or sound levels. And you can see that there's specific areas where it's fairly high. Deformation tells you how things behave. So we can um, also plot the deformation of the entire structure. So it's going to start out by looking at the last frequency. This is what would happen if we excited the structure at 20,000 hertz. We can also grab any one of these uh, frequencies. Uh, let's create a result for this one. So this is, a, this is a different frequency. I probably should really refine the mesh considerably for this model. It's looking a little jagged, but in the interest of uh, time here, I'll leave it as it is. So once that's completed, we can then send the, the simulation to an acoustic simulation. In acoustic simulation, we'll get rid of the solid parts, leave the, leave the fluid domain or the air around it, the air box I created, and we'll calculate the acoustics uh, simula uh, performance inside of that volume. So the enclosure here will be air, and we won't need our solid anymore. Okay, so let's. Uh, typically, we want a fairly refined mesh for our acoustic simulation. So Ansys has a, a bunch of different meshing settings, but let's let's set that to a more refined mesh size, and we'll go from there. So obviously, as your mesh count increases, the simulation slows down. We'll do the same thing from zero to twenty thousand hertz, but instead of solving all of those points, I'm going to only do 10 solutions. Uh, for this type of um, acoustic harmonic sweep, we're doing a full solution. So this means that we have to solve a get a result for each of the points. So if I do two points, 200 points, it'll be a little bit long here. Uh, this is how we import the data. So we know there's a, a little uh, plate inside. So I'm going to switch the selection to to the inside. So it should select the seven faces um, of my plate. And it's going to start mapping frequencies over. Uh, what I typically do is grab all of the frequencies here in my modal analysis and copy it over here. So we're going to copy it twice. right? This is the frequency from the uh, the structure simulation, and it's going to be mapped onto this frequency for uh, the acoustic simulation, and this is what we interpolate between. Mm 
Okay, so now we can run our simulation. Oh, I didn't include uh, um, the the boundaries. So uh, for acoustic analysis, you have to treat the boundaries somehow. <clears throat> there are a few options, but the idea is that this is only a, a portion of the air, and outside is infinite air. So we have a number of acoustic boundary conditions. Uh, radiation boundary conditions is a good one, and absorbing elements. Absorbing elements will allow you to create PM, automatically create PM, PML type of uh, boundary. Radiation is similar. Uh, usually, I think the recommendation is PML, but we've, we have very good result with radiation boundaries. Uh, these days, so this is a easy way of set that up. So this means that as the acoustics energy hits the outer surface, it'll just get radiated away. It won't get reflected back, and that means that our the results interior to the the to the boundaries are accurate. All right, so that's uh, ten frequencies spread out in a logarithmic manner and we can grab um, we can plot a wide range of acoustic results for example acoustic weighted sound pressure levels let's uh, get rid of our edges and we can look inside of this uh, model so I'm gonna do a cut plane do an animation to see what the SPL looks like Uh, for that frequency, and if we go back here, we can see what is what it looks like for the very first frequency. Okay. And we can also probe results, so we can do a, a SPL microphone. There's a few. Let's do a A-weighted SPL microphone here. I'm going to get rid of the section plane and get rid of the mesh. So that's our, the ball is where the microphone is. We can move it around uh, in the Y axis up to here. And this tells us uh, the acoustics performance has a function of frequency. We only did 10 points though, so the current frequency plot doesn't look very interesting. You, you obviously want to uh, set this up as a, a logarithmic plot because right now it's linear. I, I don't think there's a way to do a log plot, but you can certainly copy and paste this information into Excel, just copy cell and paste cell, and create a logarithmic plot. Um, there's a lot of, of other features you can investigate, different types of uh, result processing, um, different types of setup. This shows you a one-way couple structure to acoustic simulation. You can also do a couple fully coupled structure acoustic simulation, which means that for each element, there will be both a structural degrees of freedom, so it can move around, as well as acoustic degrees of freedom. That's a tightly coupled problem. To do that, you need to download the ANSYS Acoustics ACT extension from the ANSYS App Store. Um, that's a quick demonstration of ANSYS Vibroacoustics. Hope you found it interesting. If you have any questions, let us know. Uh, you can reach us on our website at www.singularityeng.com. Thank you and have a good day.